Hi folks, welcome to Chris Goes Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Welcome back. As part of my trip I took, what I call searching for freedom in America, one of my main stops I stayed for almost a week was in Crossville, Tennessee. And as you see here, this is a version from the 1940s, a picture. Many of the buildings are still there, which is really cool. Uh, give you an idea of what it looks like in the 1940s. I like the cars. Uh, Oh boy, but that's where I stayed most of the time and I went to Virginia Beach to see family. But it hit a lot of buttons for me. And I'm gonna get some video here coming up to show you exactly what that looks like. I'm seriously, seriously considering moving there. Um, we'll see how long, how many years. I'll be 65 in November. So the clock is ticking, just like it is in all of us. But I wanted to show some video, camera, steady Eddie. <laughs> so, uh, so here is the, some of the video and I'll narrate some of it concerning downtown Crossville. And you can see there's the old timey drugstore, I call it. It's been there a long time. As you can see, there's a 1930s you look in the window on the counter there on the left, it's a 1960s, 1970s soda fountain. It's a beautiful mur mural that's downtown. It's, um, it's really cool. If you see here, there's a little plaque there that explains who did it and why. And, and it was really well done. And for a small town like Crossville, I believe there's around 20 odd thousand in the town and almost 50,000 in the county, Cumberland County. Kind of a weird coincidence. I'm I'm big on coincidences for signs on what to do. And as I was torturing myself and whether to leave upstate New York, the town I grew up in, to move there, I discovered that Cumberland County was incorporated and made into a county, I believe it was in 1855. But the weird coincidence is it was on my birthday, November 16th. So I thought that was pretty interesting and that, boy, that really, uh, that was spooky. Here's some pictures from downtown and there's the front of the old uh, drugstore again. It's a cool place, a very cool place. I wandered around and there's a picture. If you see on your left on the road, it goes up the hill. That's the new portion of downtown. Of course, like a lot of cities between malls and Walmarts and and, and just development in general, a lot of the downtowns have been obliterated because of the retail has moved. What well, they did here in Crossville because they have the room. If you notice, just before the hill starts going up on the left, that's the end of the old downtown. All they did was they extended it. And that's four, that's four lanes, very, very busy traffic, has tons of restaurants, tons of stores, a Walmart, a million things you'd ever want in a modern city as far as retail goes. And there's some, there's some other commercial buildings there as well. And so they kept the best of both worlds, pretty smart. And as we uh, flash around here, there's French's. They have some amazing cowboy boots. Uh, the lady I stayed with, a friend of mine, so that having cowboy boots down in Tennessee is almost almost a requirement. So maybe if I move there, I'll have to get myself a pair of cowboy boots. I'll definitely go to French's. They've got some amazing stuff inside there. Talk about quality, and it, it's pretty cool. And uh, there's some more of the older buildings in Crossville. It's a really cool place, but I want you to, I want you to think about something right here. Have you noticed what's missing? What's missing from all these video you're gonna see from downtown Crossville, what's missing? Uh, pause the video and think about what is not in this picture. 
that you normally see in a downtown area. And I'll give you the answer, but stop the video in case you want to figure it out by yourself. Do you see any garbage? Do you see any trash? Do you see any cigarette butts? Nothing. These people give a damn about their community. And this is some progressive liberal pie in the sky community stuff. They deeply care about the community and the people that are in it. They care about each other because they're conservative people. And they see things differently than the liptards do. And I get some close-ups of the other end of downtown. And it's a, it's a great community. It really is. It's amazing. The people are so, so friendly. There's a picture of the uh, memorial for veterans. That's what a memorial should look like. That's not playing. That's a sign there. That's in right in front of the old courthouse. In the background is a courthouse built in 1905. And it has all the cities that are in the distance from Crossville. Now, this has been around for a very long time. If you look online, there's old pictures of this from the 1930s. It just, what happens every so often, they just repaint them and spruce them up. And it's been moved around, but it's still the original. And as you can see, it probably just recently done. Those numbers are nice and crisp. But it's the original sign. And good for them. I don't like everything new. Just because something is old doesn't mean to get rid of it. It's got class. That's a cool courthouse, 1905. And there is the military museum that we're going to have a video on later. And there's part of the county facility across the street from the courthouse. I believe that was the original post office. And there's the military building. The Chamber of Commerce is just there on the right. I want to talk to the young man. Now, this is over by the courthouse. This is the first steam engine in Cumberland County, which is in central Tennessee. As you'll see here, 1872. This was the engine brought to Cumberland County from Indiana by Samuel Klein about 1872, powered by powered a sawmill and grist mill, and it was a pretty big deal. I mean, you're talking 1872, especially in a rural area like this. It isn't near a major city at all, so that was a huge deal. And it's funny, um, that was dedicated in 1956. That was my birthday, so. I hope I don't look that old, but uh, there's the original uh, steam engine. Pretty cool. Now, uh, they painted it up. I'm sure it doesn't work. Now, there's the courthouse there on the right with the flag, and the bottom flag below the U.S. flag is the Tennessee flag. There's the famous Palace Theater. Every time you punch in Crossville on the Internet, they always show a picture of this movie marquee lit up at night. It's pretty cool. I believe it's like a light yellow, and, uh, and the darkness looks really awesome. And I'm a huge, huge movie theater fan. I stream. I watch stuff online, but being in the movies is a social thing. It's being with other people and the big screen and the surround sound and everything. I'm telling you, it's, I love the movie experience. So I was drawn directly to the Palace Theater. And you can see it's, it's good size. It closed in the uh, in 1970s, and now it's owned by, I believe, a nonprofit that shows movies. And they had a Tom Hanks festival. I think they had to cancel a lot of it because of COVID, but they didn't have the lockdowns like the dictatorial governors of New York and California did and other states, Michigan. They had safety precautions, to be sure, and the private businesses and corporations had their own rules. But this, these guys were open for business. I was there in early June. And they were open for business everywhere. No restrictions. And the place is booming. Absolutely booming. Talked to a lot of people that were from outside the area. Thinking about moving there or they were traveling through. And they just were fed up in the deep, deep blue states that they live in. Some were from Southern California. Some were from New York. There's a picture of the front door there. The old, there's the old chrome. I mean, that brings back memories. I'm 64, and there's the old timey 
ticket booth, and I just think that's amazingly cool. It's very cool, and I'll tell you, I wish I could have stayed for some of the movies that were coming up. They had a Buddy Holly tribute. There's a sign there that was built in 1938, closed in 78, and restored in 2001, and is placed on the National Register. That way they can't mess with it in 1994, and I thought that was cool. It was right towards the end of the Depression, just before World War II. As we all know, World War II started October 1st, 1939. So it lasted 40 years before it closed. And there's a picture of downtown again. Uh, the courthouse is on the right-hand side behind that tree. Now, the only piece of garbage I found, if you see the trash can where it says uh, bicycle crossing, PED crossing, it was a piece of garbage right in front of the garbage can. That's the only scrap of garbage I found all of downtown. I picked it up and I put it in the garbage can. No garbage, no cigarette butts. You drive down through Crossville, you're at a red light. There's a military museum. I'm going to do a separate video on that. There's some really, really cool stuff in there. Civil War through the Middle East conflicts. It's a cool place, a very cool place. And they got a lot of cool stuff in a real small area. And they got it arranged really well. Crossville had a German prisoner war camp. So I'll get into that in another video. There's the courthouse built in 1905, as you can see. It's beautiful. I mean, look at the, the clock and look at all the chimneys when they had fireplaces. And I mean, just look at this. Look how well it's maintained. It was a beautiful day that day. In Tennessee, a couple of residents left and they say the temperature, or excuse me, the weather is bipolar. It'll be bright and sunny like that, and then it'll rain for 15 minutes, and then it'll be bright and sunny again almost every day. Stuff grows like crazy down there. They get plenty of rain, so. But it's not like the Washington State rain where it's constantly cloudy. You'll get your rain, and then you'll uh, get your sunshine all day long. It's a pretty cool place. So I took a little extra time in the courthouse. Now here is the memorials. Here's the memorial for Korea. Now, this is the memorial for Civil War veterans. And before all you libtards start freaking out, oh, my God, look, they got a plaque for CSA. That's the slave-owning racist that tried to split up the country. Blah, blah, blah. You know, shut up. Cumberland County, like most of Tennessee, like most of the country, was split in half considering the Civil War. These are people that went to the Civil War from Cumberland County. And for a tiny county, look at all these men. And the list is pretty even on both sides. Tennessee was the last state to secede. I don't know what the legislative vote was. You have to remember something. They were residents of Cumberland County that are Tennesseans. And they were also Americans, too, on both of these plaques. So keep your, your fighting for racism uh, crap in, in, tech, in tow here. Just if you have an opinion, keep it to yourself because these are all people that put their lives on the line for what they believed in. Whether you agree with it or not, it's a different issue. And it was a really well done memorial. Very cool. I uh, went over and got a shot of both sides, as you can see. Uh, there's some same last names on each side of that plaque. That's the CSA side. There's probably some family members or cousins that fought each other. That's uh, pretty bad stuff. And there's the plaque for the union side. And if you see, there's a, a couple of Turners in there and some same last names. In the county that small, they're probably related. And that's the um, dedication honoring those in Cumberland County who served in the Civil War. You notice they don't make the distinction on what side because they were all Americans. And the war was over. They were still all Americans. And that's the honor roll there, the big, big plaque in the middle. 
if you see World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, and even cooler, the plaque on the bottom is American Revolution soldiers. How cool is that? Now that's a big deal. When was the last time you saw everything World War One, Two, Korea, Vietnam, and the American Revolution on a memorial plaque. Pretty awesome stuff. Now we're back in downtown Crossville. Up on the left there where that hill is, is where the new section of downtown is. Uh, built up in the last 15, 20 years. Sorry for my unsteady camera work. But it's really, it's really interesting. Is What's interesting is the fact that I crossed across the street basically right where this picture is. And it wasn't at the light. It wasn't at the crosswalk. I didn't feel like walking up to the corner. I guess I was just too lazy. And as I stood there and waited for the cars to come by, and you can see this is not like two or three cars. It's a fairly busy street. The car stopped and let me cross on both sides. And I went, wow. So I asked my friend, is that like a city ordinance or nope? Common courtesy. Give you an idea. We've all seen funeral processions where cars are going through town. They go through the red lights to go to the cemetery uh, to have the end of their funeral procession. In Tennessee, or at least this part of Tennessee, if you're driving and you see ahead of you a funeral procession coming, all cars on both lanes pull over to the shoulder while they pass. That's called honor and respect. And that's something, something that we don't have anymore. And so there's some more views of downtown. There's French's cowboy boot, boot store on the right. And it's just an amazing place. Uh, you're going to see a video up here. There's the, they have a couple of those in the county, the big water towers. Now they are, it is the golf capital of Tennessee. There's a, it's like eight, 10 golf courses in this county. It's really amazing. So it looks like if I spend any time there or move there, I'm going to have to learn how to play golf. I might trade that years ago, and it's tough. But maybe I'll give it another shot. Now that I'm older and supposedly have more patience, at least theoretically. I wanted to show this because this was down around the street from where I was staying. It's an apartment complex called Beverly Hills. So they even got Beverly Hills in Tennessee. I thought that was pretty funny when I go by there. I had a... Now, this was out in front of a retail store. Your husband called. He said, buy anything you want. And then it has dollar signs now. Oh, my God. That's my Coke, by the way, on the left, on the crowd. I must have forgot I was in the picture. Oh, my God. That's, that's, that's the patriarchy. That's, you get permission to spend money. She's a free individual person. She can do what she wants. Blah, blah, blah. But, you know, shut the F up. It's a joke. Nobody takes offense to it. This woke progressive nonsense hasn't hit in this area yet, at least for the most part. It's a joke. Everybody thought it was funny. You could put your wife called, and she said, buy anything you want. It's the same thing. So any of you that want to make a comment, keep it to yourself. It's a joke. I thought it was funny, so I took a picture of it. And there's the theater again, a little closer on the marquee. See a lot of the neons are still up. I just think old movie theaters are the coolest thing. Absolutely the coolest thing. It's some of the same again like I did before because I was there on exploring the town on two different days. You might see the same footage. Not exactly the same, but but um it's I just couldn't help but take another picture of it again. This is such a cool place. I mean, can you imagine watching an old Marx Brothers duck soup movie in an old movie theater? I mean, to tell you the truth, I think they were doing the, 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 the movies. It was $5 admission and free popcorn. Are you kidding? That's awesome. To watch a Marx Brothers duck soup movie with five bucks on popcorn? Good Lord. And free popcorn and $5 admission. I would live at this place. I'd probably be at everything they showed, no matter what it was. And, of course, Tom Hanks. That would be awesome. That would be absolutely awesome. 
And so you're going to see a little bit of the same place again. Those are some of the things that were coming up. It must have been earlier the masks were required because it's close quarters in a movie theater. And that's okay. That's my choice. They didn't shut any of everything down like they did in New York where I live in, in California and Michigan and all the other libtard states, a.k.a. blue states, deep blue states. But one thing I wanted to mention, I was sitting right here for a few minutes. There's a bench across the street in front of a store. And every single person that walked by, no matter what age, male, female, as they walked by, they said, hey, and waved to me. Every single one. I thought to myself, my God, my God. And see that red light there. I was at that intersection. I was in the right-hand lane because I wanted to go straight. And the car on my left where that pickup is was sitting there next to me. I looked up and made eye contact with the driver. And every single time you're waiting for a light and the car next to you sees you, they wave. Hey, it's, it's, it just, it sounds like a little thing, but it's not. It's huge. And I couldn't, I was stunned, absolutely stunned at the courtesy, the manners, the respect. That's old school, folks. And something shouldn't be changed, especially in today's society. That's one of the huge appeals of Crossville. Plus, it's just a beautiful place to live, period. And I wanted to mention that one of, the, one of the days they had a small power outage, I guess a transformer went somewhere. And as you see up the road here, as you go towards the busier, newer part of downtown Crossville, where the Walmart is and all the restaurants and stores, in the four lanes where a lot of the traffic is, they had a power outage and all of the four-way street signals were, weren't working. Downtown right here, none of the signals were working. And here's the funny part. This intersection, too, and all the way up through a three-mile stretch. Nobody's honking horns. Nobody's arguing. Nobody's flipping anybody to the bone. Nobody's got rage with their head out the window, like, get the F out of my way. Everybody looked at each other at the intersection and treated it as a four-way stop. You go, okay, you go, okay, you go. And this went on for three hours. If this isn't one or two cars, this is heavy traffic. And it's five times as heavy up the road. No incidents. Everybody letting each other in. No matter where the, which direction they're going in. Left, right, straight. With no street lights. I just sat there in awe and wonder. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's not. That tells you the mindset of the people there. Courtesy, manners, respect. Good luck finding that in a lot of places, especially in New York, California, and a lot of places. That's been taken away, and it's a shame. It really has. It's a shame. So I'm just showing some footage here at downtown. I like the place a lot. And there's some more footage there. And it's just, it's just amazing. It really is. It's just a truly amazing place. I, I'm torn. I'm torn on whether I'm going to move there. Now, it's pretty late in life to be changing your whole life. I'll be 65 in November. Maybe I'll somehow figure out a way to spend a lot of time there and still stay in New York. I don't know. But I'm very, very, very tempted to move there, to live there. Now, my mother's still here, and I have one brother here in where I grew up. My other brother passed away. My father passed away. So I've got some hard decisions to make. But maybe it'll be an easy decision. I've said this before on my channel, and I'll say it again. It's a quote that I heard. It says, we must be willing to get rid of the life we've planned so as to have the life that's waiting for us. And I thought about that a lot. I just recently sold my business in March. 
I've got a lot more free time to think, relax, rest up mentally and physically. And this is the first leg of my looking for freedom in America tour, I guess you'd call it. And later this summer, I'm going to be taking another trip, maybe this fall, depending on how hot it is, from Virginia Beach through North and South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and then swing back around into Tennessee and then come back to upstate New York. So that's going to be coming up later, but I just wanted to show you this part of the trip. I'm going to talk about in detail when I show some highway footage about my thoughts on talking to people, their views, their attitudes, their attitudes towards each other, the communities they live in. Now this is the gazebo that's right next to the courthouse. And I was sitting on the stairs there and I sat on the bench there on the left as well, but I sat on the stairs and right on the right of this photo is the inside entrance to the courthouse. And I must have saw 15, 20 minutes that I sat there just, just relaxing and looking around, enjoying the beautiful day. 15, 20 people come out of the door easily, going in and out. Every single person that walked by this gazebo to either go in the courthouse or leaving the courthouse, waved and said, hey. And several stopped and talked. Two, three, four, five minutes. That's a long time to talk to a stranger. I was flabbergasted. I was flabbergasted. I went, oh my God. This is what America really is. Those of you that aren't happy in the places you're at, there are nice places. There are beautiful places. But one request, don't bring your liberal progressive views into these beautiful communities and destroy them too. And the locals will say exactly the same thing. That's one of their biggest fears. And there's the door there. People are coming in and out of the courthouse. Every single person said, hey, and several stopped and talked. Uh, it was an amazing thing. It made me feel so good. And I know it seems like such a simple thing, but it's not. It's not simple at all. It's something that stuck with me, and I can't shake it. So this is Crossville in central Tennessee, just a little bit east of the center of Tennessee. And you can see how far it is from Knoxville and, and all the places, Nashville. You can stop the video if you want to get an idea where it is from these these markers for the cities. And I was just blown away. Now, I was there before, uh, about a year and a half ago in November. If it got a little bit of snow, it was funny. They do get winter there, but not like we do in upstate New York and in the Northeast in the Northern United States. They get an inch or two, you know, it's like a big deal. But I wanted to show everybody what I experienced in downtown Crossville talking to some of the people. And I think it's just an amazing, amazing, amazing place. And I would suggest anyone that wants to check out this place, maybe do a place to retire. It's really reasonable to live here. Give you an idea, my friend and I went up the road there to the Chinese buffet, the real Chinese buffet, not a fake one, a real one with tons of food, desserts, the works, sushi. $8.99 plus the beverage. You got to pay for the beverage. That's it. There is zero, zero state income tax. Zero. Registering your car is cheaper. Your car insurance is cheaper. Utilities are much cheaper. The property taxes compared to upstate New York and California and, and the deep blue states is minimal at best. I was paying $500 a month for just local property taxes on the building my business was in. That's city, county, and school. 
just a hair over 6,000 a year. And I was telling, uh, we went out to dinner with a few people and, and said one of the ladies, I was telling her that and she said, I pay barely over 600 for a whole year on my property. But one thing I beg of you people that, that as I promote this and show you what life can be like if you want it to be, and you move to areas like this or this one, please, please, please do not bring your progressive Democrat ideologies to these towns. These towns are like this for a reason, and these people are like this for a reason. Think of it as destroying a natural habitat. So some of you lefties out there, you're such gung-ho on nature. This is pretty much the same. Leave it like it is. Don't mess with it. Some things aren't meant to be changed. If it's not fixed, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But anyway, folks, there's my video and thoughts on downtown Crossville and some of the people I interacted with. Oh boy, I'll tell you, I'm very tempted. If I didn't own my house and it wasn't filled with stuff, I might be gone. We'll have to see how things turn out. But there you have it. And until next time, folks, goodbye and good luck.